Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the 1894 podcast and welcome back to yet another positive match review. Um, did we talk about the whole game? I don't think we did, did we, in detail? Um, we, we didn't do, we didn't do no, a match No, I, I did it with, uh, with Lawrence. You, but you, you, yeah, you yeah, yeah, you, yeah, sorry about that. Um, uh, I would make a good excuse, but I actually can't remember what the excuse was, so I'll... I'll, I'll remember later in the podcast. Um, yeah, we're here after Bristol City's. Yeah, uh, it was all right, wasn't it? Uh, an all right performance it was okay. Um, no, we absolutely smashed Watford four one at Vicarage Road um, yesterday, and yeah, we are very very happy. Uh, Matisse is in the Christmas spirit. I've got my City scarf on me, but I'm not wearing it because it looks stupid. Um, more than I already do. Um, Matisse, how are you doing? And um, how was your Christmas? Because yeah, that was good. I yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. I mean, to go on, on away day when we haven't won in our last six, um, which I was actually surprised about. I didn't know. Um, and to go to go into that match and yeah, come out four one victory. What what a late Christmas present that is. I mean, yeah, had a lovely Christmas, and then we get our third the. Um, three wins on the bounce, which is the first time in over three years um, in the league. So, yeah, I mean, it was just to be there as well. I haven't seen a lot of great games to the, to the matches I've been to this this season. Um, I think the only other win I've seen is Millwall away. Um, so it was, it was nice to get a confident, like just an absolute battering. And it was brilliant. We just, we just played brilliantly and we completely deserved it. And all the goals were, were good. Um, and yeah, just overall brilliant performance. And, how much a few a couple of weeks can change in the Christmas period because we were what like I think seven points off going into mm-hmm. Sunderland. Then we beat two sixth place sides when we were facing them, and then a side who in their last thirteen have only lost twice, and those are against the top two at Switch and Leicester. So I mean they've been in some good form as well. So it wasn't an easy game um, going into it. I'm not getting excited at all. No. <laughs> I'm not getting carried away. Um... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll go into the we'll go into the lineup. Um, I have to admit, first of all, I didn't watch the game, so Matisse will take charge on this one. Um, I, I, you can call me a plastic, you can call me a daydream, but I don't really care. Um, whatever, whatever you want. Um, to be honest, plastic, the words plastic and Bristol plastic fan Bristol City fan does stick together. It's like. It's, it's like it's like it's like calling it's like calling someone rich, but when they live in a tent, it's like no, it doesn't work. Um, anyway, that actually doesn't work either. Um, it was Max in goal. Um, Tanner, Dicky, Viner, Prince is in back four. Joe Williams in midfield. So no Matty James. Um, Taylor Garden, Hicklin, and Jason Knight, uh, who took the captain's armband in place of Joe, um, in, in place of Matty James, and uh, the lack of Andy Viner in and starting eleven. Mamati, Conway and Sykes the same front three uh, that started against Hull. And did they start against Sunderland? Probably did. Um, yeah, what were your thoughts? One change, James out, uh, the captain, uh, for Joe Williams. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of had to figure out when I when I got in because it took bloody ages to get in. They have one little stand in the Watford away and there's one guy getting all the tickets because it's pay on the day. So it's a massive queue. Just got, just got in for the, the first 10 seconds. But... Yeah, um, I think in that midfield three with Matty, you can kind of interchange them a bit because they they are quite like they have similar roles, uh, Williams and James. So I, I didn't mind the change. Um, Williams has been pretty good uh, when he's played, so it wasn't too fast. And then I think the front three now, Mimetti after his goal as well, especially he's going to have a lot of confidence. Um, and then the yeah, the rest of the field is is pretty. Um, settled down but yeah Williams coming in not not too fast to, to move it around and then we also still had Naki obviously on the bench coming back and then yeah some some youngsters and just the, the normal bench yeah yeah um this was the Watford uh, lineup and so it appears uh it was Ben Hamer in goal uh, back four of Ryan Andrews uh Wesley Hoyt who helped us quite a lot uh, Francisco Sierra Alta, Jamal Lewis, who was absolutely terrible. Um, by the way, he was actually ripped to shreds by Mark Sykes from what I saw. Um, Jake Livermore, Ed Okembe, let's not even start talking about him for that third Bristol City goal. Um, Ishmael Kone, Yasser Spria, who was good. 
Um, Ken Sammer, who was pocketed by George Tanner, and uh, Mileta Jurajevic, who was just just awful. Um, and that's a good Watford team, by the way. Yeah, I know I've just said all of that, but really, they're a good side, especially at Vicarage Road. They've made that a tough place to go to. Um, and we've rocked up there, you know, as a team who they probably, if they want to get, if Watford wants to get in the playoffs, they should be beating us. Let's be honest about it. Um, but if we want to get into, if we want to get into the playoffs, we have to be getting something at Watford. We rocked up there, um, and I think it was one of the boys on the um, from a Bristol City, uh, from a Bristol City podcast. I saw, um, uh, I listened to earlier earlier today, and that that's a good listen by the way. You should check them out. Um, and they said, for the first time uh, in a while, Bristol City rocked up. It's a tough away game. It's a tough place to go to, and we had that belief about us that we could really go and win and not this kind of oh I'll take a point here I, I don't I just don't want to lose here just take a point and run and then that kind of mentality normally doesn't get you many points away from home they might get you the odd win here and there might get you, get you the odd point um but it doesn't really bode well do you agree with that thing that that we had that real belief that from the off we could really go and win here yeah I think yeah it's all about the attitude and Kind of yeah, the behaviour from the players and how they go into the game, and I think oh, don't yeah, start Manning's with the behaviour kinda... from you as well, Manning. Manning, and now you saying the word behaviour is on. Yeah. I it's mean, catching on. It's catching he's, on. he's 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 making some some good points. I have to say, and he's to to go into the game like you said when you play against top sides. If we want to be a, a top side, then we have to. Yeah, mentally, like go into that and saying we we can win this game, and yeah, from from the offset, I thought yeah, I thought we had obviously you always think you have a good chance of winning, but I feel like I know as fans and people like we don't always see us going into a game, especially in a way one like you said, oh we're gonna get all the three points um, here. We usually say in our predictions, and most people yeah we'll take a point this in the next three games we'll take four or five points, but. I've got nine out of nine in the last three. Um, so, yeah, it's we've changed it around and now we can go into each game um, yeah, quite confidently, I think. Just, just think about it. We've got we've got three we've got three wins out of the last three, but that, actually that, that's just kind of sunk in. We've been Hull, we've been Sunderland, we've been Watford away. We've been really good sides in this division. We've beaten them all back-to-back. Uh, -back. Yeah, that, that's just sunk in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's quite good. Um, all right, let's talk about let's talk about the goals then, because there's quite a lot, and a lot of them are for Bristol City. Um, five, five of them, in fact, four for City, one for Watford, uh, as you probably have guessed. Um, first one is the most. It's my, It's kind of the most simple yet most effective form of scoring goals, I suppose, and a very unlikely goal scorer as well. Do you want to talk us through? Yeah, so I think we get a free kick on the left hand side. I mean, the first, well, it took us again like about half an hour to to get that first goal. I mean, it happens with every game. We're just settling in. I think Watford had a couple chances. O'Leary had to make a, a a decent save. It came right at him actually, and then cleared it was, uh, off yes, by, it was yes, by uh, Dickey. Asprey, uh, folly, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's pretty. I have to say, he was it was he was very dangerous um, yesterday, uh, and he did yeah create Watford's goal, which we we'll get on to. But yeah. Pretty uh, relatively tight um, first 20, 25 minutes. And then, yeah, we get a free kick. Pring places himself brilliantly. And I think it, come, yeah, it comes off the head of maybe it's a Watford play or Viner, maybe just looking at the replay. I think it's just a clearance. Yeah. And then it falls to Pring and he just, yeah, takes a touch, swings his right leg um, and it finds its way in the bottom right corner, goes through all the players. Hamer can't reach it. And he scored his first goal of the season and, yeah, his second goal in a, in a City shirt. And it's great. I mean, no one would have thought he would have scored. But, well, we were obviously moving it down the left side a lot. I mean, in that instance, it was, yeah, just it fell to him. But good that he took it on and didn't go flying over the bar like it, like it did against Hull. Um, but, yeah, a brilliant way to open the scoring. And, yeah, we're, we're ready 1-0 uh, up. Um, and then I think, to be honest... You say we we silence the crowd a little bit, but Watford uh, Watford's fans are just <laughs> something else. I mean, it is really a family a family club. <laughs> they are so so you you couldn't hear anything. I think in the rookery opposite the way end, they have a few 
a few singers let's say and maybe one 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 drum um but really they were they were they had nothing um to chant about but yeah so we have one nil in 30 minutes and it was it was, it was a good start you, you can't say anything about home ground you you um i mean I, I i can say that we're we're, we're better than than what for zone ground i i have to say I trust me. Well, yeah, I'm not I'm sure. Not sure. Well, well, and, but, uh, at Holland Sunderland, it was. I heard good things. I heard good things. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it was a very good guitar. It was brilliant, actually. Um, mm. Part of that. Um, Jamal Lewis, the Watford left back, goes off injured um, in uh, under 45. Not like stoppage time in the first half. Um, Matthias Martins uh, comes on, uh, who's a very attacking player. Um, so actually, I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't really pay attention to what Watford um, did after that. Uh, but they took out a left back. They put on an attacker, in, instead of his place. Um, did they have any anyone else that they could have chucked in at left back? No, not really. I think they have. I, I have a Watford. Um, I have a friend who's a Watford fan, and I think they said now. Yeah, they have like zero left backs after that injury. Um, so then they ran out. Ran out for that game. Um, yeah, so what did they yeah. do after they what did they do after they went they changed that? Did they did they just well, play the attacker at left back? Um no no, no. Um to be honest, I, I'm probably gonna take a a shot in the dark, but they prob I I don't I think what was it, Martins, yeah, number thirty seven. Maybe he played as like kind of a a wing a wing back. Let me see what he's an attacker. Yeah, he's a left winger, so he probably played as like a a, a wing back. Um, oh, Ken. Oh, Ken Seven might have played left back because he can play left back as well. He's played uh, left back in the scrimmage before, so he might have just played left back then. Oh, that might. Yeah, that might. That's probably yeah. it. I think, I think and then, it. and then Martin's moved up to left wing, probably. Um, yeah. But yeah. anyway, only two minutes later, we we're into stoppage time. Um, a last attack. I mean, Mimetti on the ball. His confidence has gone up. His his composure, the way he's on the ball. Beautiful pass through to Tommy Conway. And then he gets the ball off. It's a brilliant cross, but doesn't have to reach Sykes at the far post because Hoyd is there for us and, and he turns it into his own net um, to, to double our lead at half time. It, it's a brilliant finish. And <laughs> Hamer, no chance, obviously. And yeah, I mean, it's one of those you get into dangerous areas. It's, if it's an own goal, it shows that you're creating a lot. Um, but yeah, it's just taken really badly by, by the centre back. But. Um, it's a great way to end the first half to go in to go in two up. When it's a goal like that, you always kind of you know, um, give, uh, you give as you said, you're creating chances, and that's kind of the case. If you if you're doing that on a kind of regular basis, and uh, uh, if if you if you're always getting off cutting goals against you in that sort of manner, um, yeah, you're always creating chances. A perfect way to end the half, really, because I yeah, because that was a. Yeah, a bit from what from what I've heard, what you told me, that's a good um good half. And uh, yeah. That's but like like we me. said, it's it's like the the Tanner own goal. It's not like one of the I wouldn't be happy with with one of those because it's just quite poor yeah. poor defending in that game. But or the Zach yeah, Viner yeah. one. Which, oh, yeah. <laughs> like one against, um, middle I mean, if you showed that to that someone game. just from that freeze frame, it looks like he's the attacker and he's absolutely he's gone for, for a goal. There. Into <laughs> and did you see the um, Miggy, Miguel Almiron thing? Um, for, for Newcastle against Forest, the oh, it's no, a similar kind of situation. The guys, the Forest guys are on the left, Mick Almiron's defending, he tries to put it into his own net. He genuinely tries. To, I'll, I'll send it to you afterwards if you can't. Um, if you can't find yeah. it, it's he genuinely put it put it into his own net. Uh, tries to put it into his own net. Doesn't succeed somehow. Um, anyway, half time. Watford make a double substitution, which will be crucial. Which is not touching on it. Um, Tom Deli Bashiru comes on for uh, Ryan Andrews, uh, so he'll just slot in it right back. Uh, Georgie Chuck Vadatse comes on the Georgian international for Jake Livermore, who was yeah not good. Um, and yeah, the, the player we mentioned earlier, the Colombian, is it? That's a, yeah, Colombian. That's a, a Spria, um creates a chance for Chuck Vadatse. Uh, puts him in on the on the right hand side. It's a good finish. To be fair, uh, just I think might have been just in off the far post. Um, yeah, Max is a bit. Yeah, uh, defenders completely switched off. To be honest. 
it's it is a disappointing one to concede um and also at that at that point we were still t- two 0 up and um two 0 is well being two goals up is the most dangerous scoreline and we we know that after the Stoke home game um so when that went in I was just a little bit worried but oh yeah exactly on Middlesbrough so but not but not to, for too long but yeah it was a, a clearance from Pring and then yeah it's we'll switch over to the right hand side which they did a lot throughout the game that i noticed they tried to play it to a spree obviously to create something but i thought most of the time we handled it quite well um with pring but yeah on that time just switched off he let the pass go through tgh wasn't completely tracking his man and then yeah it is it's, it goes through his legs really it's it's poor keeping um he should be doing better but it is it is a, it is a good goal for if i give him that but i think we should be max should be saving that one um, other than that, I thought he had a pretty decent game, but didn't have too too much other else to do. But yeah, two one Watford have made some noise that we've heard uh, after a goal. But I was getting a little bit worried, but luckily, um, Mark the only, Sykes. Otherwise, only there. Mark Sykes on the score sheet exactly. Yeah, we we intercept the the ball quite. Um, how if I bring it back just to refresh? Edo uh, Edo Kiembe loses it like in his own half at edge of his own box really um, yeah 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 in his own half that it was a good press the press that we've had was really good yeah and then it picks up by tommy conway finds mimetti on the left hand side and mimetti again he's taking shots he's had it he had a lot of chances brilliant but brings it onto his left fires it across it's goal it's a good save yeah it's a really good save because the shot was not bad and it had a, had a bit of power on it um but yeah brilliant sykes good positioning back post and yeah, he finishes off what's happened in front of the way end, and and within a minute, we we've got our two goal lead back, and yeah, it's absolutely him. So yeah, great to do that. Great mentality to not crumble and then fall apart, and then the game game becomes a lot closer than it should be. Um, make it three one, and it's it's all comfortable again. So yeah, it was a it was a great goal, and yeah, happy happy for Sykes. Thing is, this happens in the space of about twenty seconds. Like it's 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 by the time we've kind of got over that second uh, that Watford goal they've scored, swap just <laughs> turns and um, and I've not really seen that in a city team before to be honest. Like normally, if we if we go if we go um, either go a goal down or we concede an equaliser or something along those lines, or we concede a goal, we normally kind of set off, feel a bit sorry for ourselves and hope that you know we kind of ride it out and maybe we see the game out or something like that um we are literally pressing from the minute of kickoff as soon as we lose the ball um from kickoff pressing uh, making sure Watford don't have anything for free um that's how the third goal comes um Reece Lee comes on for Ishmael Kone so Valerian Ishmael is going for it a uh, striker on for another central midfielder um Taylor Garner Hickman um, who, by the way, we sign uh, now, uh, comes off for Matty James. Um, yeah, I thought Taylor Garden Hickman, I think he's been brilliant the past few games. Um, and he got the, uh, well, not the assist, but he put that ball in for the first goal, didn't he? Um, yeah, yeah, he did. Um, but yeah, Taylor Garden Hickman, I mean, we're going to, we're going to be so thankful that for that signing and the fact that we do have the option to buy because I'm telling you, I will grab him the second that we can. I don't know when we can get the pen to paper, but yeah, he's a he's a brilliant um, a brilliant player in the midfield and he's so crucial to us right now, to be honest, because um, we don't have too much depth um, when well, Naismith will come back eventually, but I think he, he won't, obviously he won't come straight into the starting lineup. But yeah, great. Good to sum off. We went kind of more defensively then to have James and Williams kind of there just to kind of see out the game and uh, make yeah, make sure nothing nothing happens. Then 77th minute, um another substitute, Mimetti comes off, had a brilliant game. Um lots of try. I felt like sometimes there were some chances he had the ball, he'd taken a bit too many touches, tries to find like a difficult angle there's still a bit of a cutting edge and a bit more like i don't know sense of when to when to pass when to take the shot but overall his confidence is building he got i'd give him that like he created the sykes goal 
um, through his shot. And yeah, another good performance. And he's really settling in now. And Sam Bell has has kind of, yeah, he's lost his place in the, in the last few games. And you could kind of see that Manning was going to prefer Anis over him. But it's good to have competition. And we know Sam Bell is a still brilliant player. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good that we have uh, some, some good attackers. But yeah, Feynman comes on. Um, and then also, yeah, and then 83rd minute, absolute beef. You can, you can see the, uh, well, you, you can't see it. You can hear the goal on, on, on my Instagram as I, as I attempted to film it, but apparently the, the back of someone's head got, got in the way. So yeah, over on my Instagram or Bristol talk, I, I took some videos of, of the match, but yeah. Do you want to take us through the goal? From, that, from is, that mate that pass from joe williams is ridiculous that assist is just magnificent he gets the ball i thought it was offside i thought uh, it was offside to be honest. you know what i thought the mark sykes goal was offside because i think he comes i thought he come back came back from an offside position but i haven't seen the alternative um straight on angle from it so i don't know because i've only seen the, the weird angle at vicarage road um yeah, it's a it's a it's a ridiculous pass. Isn't it? I don't know what I don't know what it is. It's a, is there an outside of the foot? Is it a is it a kind of a because you, you don't really see the technique. You don't really see the technique of the boot, do you? Um, in putting. I think it's he just laces it really. It's kind of outside yeah, the boot it's, lace. Yeah. It's it's whatever it is. It is ridiculous. Um, but Edo Kayembe again um loses his man um, and he was. Uh, he was what he was what he was away for. Um, I thought um, he loses loses Andy Vyman, uh, which is unacceptable. And then uh, Vyman has literally got the space at Vicarage Road. Um, I was speaking to a Watford fan um, uh, before the game, and he said, "Oh, Andy Vyman always scores against us because he's an ex-player." Um, and I was like, "I'm not sure you know Andy Vyman too well." Um, and then is an uh, ex-player since what? I think I think he's an ex. I think he's an ex. Didn't hold off on uh, the celebrations. <laughs> Well, um, I don't think he really cares about. He, yeah, he, he, oh, yeah, he played oh, over just over twenty games for them back in in two thousand eleven. Yeah, but you, you get the point. You, 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 yeah, he, he always he, apparently he always scores against uh, against uh, Watford. Um, and I was like, his goal scoring record hasn't been great over the past sort of twelve months. Um, absolutely brilliant finish. Literally, just just kind of. He, he times it perfectly as well. The timing so, sometimes in those positions, you can you kind of like you take the shot at the wrong time, um, and we've seen that quite a lot, uh, haven't we? Um, and he just, I think his experience is just brilliant. The, the, the way he the take uh, the uh, ability to kind of wait and be a little bit patient, and then just puts it right in that far corner is absolutely yeah, outstanding. Um, the pass from Joe Williams goes over the top. Um, Vyman's in off the left. He's got spot a space of Vickery right in front of him. He tilts his tilt in, tilts in slightly and then places it perfectly in that in that far top right corner. Um just just, it, just magnificent. It, 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 it was brilliant. I'm I'm happy for him to get back on the score sheet. And that was um his 50th goal for, for Bristol City in the league. Yeah. Um so that's great to see. He'll be soon put up on the board um ashton gate so yeah great for him um to get on the score sheet off the bench but yeah naki wells doing what naki wells does um great holding the ball up um i think he nicks the ball off someone in the midfield and then yeah finds joe williams and yeah, it's just it's embarrassing defending really it's just left him and it's got all that space it's just it's too easy um to open them up and yeah like you said the experience bring him bring us back to that 21 22 season um and yeah brilliant touch takes it brilliant finish i mean it's not to complete top right but yeah keeper can't do anything and 4-1 and limbs are still off and yeah great great to see him um score he does a little he does a little like vardy celebration there i just saw on the replay he does the little on the back <laughs> i left that one as well the, the eagle um, one <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah yeah it was great um brilliant from joe williams um i think he I think he talked about that assist for quite a while after after the game. But yeah, 4 1, 83rd minute, completely finishes the game. I think, uh, realistically, I don't think they were ever going to get back into it anyway. But yeah, 4 1. And the Watford fans start leaving and the stadium becomes empty. And then the 
the robins the the fans we uh you can see on my instagram as well we we, we took the piss to to the next level um after that fourth goal which is fair enough because it doesn't happen a lot does it um i mean we beat plymouth 4-1 but away from home against a side like watford yeah the cheerio that- songs came out the bounce around songs it was, it was <laughs> I think it's our biggest. It's you know it is our biggest away win um, in the championship since um, Fulham away in 2017. Where we won four 0 um, I think it was it Luke Freeman and maybe Aiden Flint scored in that game. I'm not over. I can't. I can't really remember. Um, I think maybe. Yeah, I think Flint scored. Um, I, I can't remember. Um, yeah, biggest away win uh, since then. And the first time we won three three games in a row in three years. Um, where was that weird spell where we beat Derby? Um, this, this was Pearson's first proper year. Uh, we beat like Derby and someone like that. Yeah, and it, it was it was a fantastic um, performance. And yeah, three wins on the balance. And it's starting to look up now for the Robins and we were what seven points off are going into that Sunderland game. And now we're just a mere point off in eighth place. I'm pretty sure. Um, Sunderland's in sixth West Brom, a few more points up the road in fifth, but yeah, what the Christmas period can, can bring. And it is crucial, these games and the fact that we've been able to integrate style of play, the behavior, the attitude, um, it's good to see. And yeah, um, I think that's about it on the game. Performances wise, I mean, defence, relatively sound. I thought Viner was 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 pretty good as well today. Man of the match was given to um, Joe Williams, which I thought was um, also very deserved. He was everywhere in the midfield, really. And then, of course, that assist at the end. Um confirmed it memetti as well I, I i'm really happy that he's he's playing now I, I said it early in the season as well i thought it was time to to change it and bring him in because he is class on the ball um so yeah night as well i mean that doesn't stop running get that gets the good fouls in in dangerous areas um yeah, overall just a brilliant win and we we, we outclass them and a the well-deserved win and now people in the championship are starting to see that Maybe yeah, maybe we do have a chance because when, when I look at predictions and all that, no, I think no, no one's backed us like at all in these last three games um, to win. But Birmingham just, up next. Just to clarify, it was our first uh, time, first time we won three back to back games uh, since twenty twenty, um, and it was uh, um, yeah, we beat Huddersfield away where you know Jada Silva came on and uh, won us that game. No, didn't come with me. Won us that game in the last few minutes. Um, Cardiff away, where Chris Martin scored in the first second, first minute, I think. Uh, and then Derby at home, where Omar Jeju uh, scored um, quite late on to beat, um, yeah, uh, then Wayne Rooney in the midfield for Derby. Jason Knight was playing for Derby. Um, yeah. That's... Um, well, look at us. We're so happy. Um, who would have thought it? Three games in a row, three wins. <laughs> suddenly, all, all of a sudden, we're very happy and we're very happy with Liam Manning. Um, talking of Liam Manning, got it actually spot on there yesterday. Tactics were chef's kiss. I thought it was going to bite us in the back of it after, I think after the first half, we kind of knew we were, we were constantly going down that left side. Um, and Sykes barely got the ball in, in the first half. Um, but yeah, we, we held our own and yeah, we, we were brilliant really on the ball. We were creating attacks. We weren't just launching the ball forward and all our goals um, were really good. I mean, yeah, the, the Pring one falls to him, but Conway is created. It is an own goal, but the Mimetti one as well. And then that, that yeah, the last goal was, I think, the best of the bunch. Um, brilliant assist and a goal. Yeah, thank you very much for once again watching, listening. Uh, follow us on on, uh, on the um, on the podcast, Spotify, wherever you are. Um, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, hit the red button uh, below, and you can uh, be notified uh, whenever you, whenever we upload. Um, by hitting the notification bell as well, and get let us know your thoughts on uh, Bruce City's recent game against Watford. 
um, the upcoming game against Birmingham and Millwall we just talked about. Um, and yeah, just like I say, your thoughts as a fan, well, how are you feeling at the moment? Three games, three wins. Um, thank and you Merry Christmas as well to everyone. Hope you have a lovely Christmas. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for um, tuning in. We'll see you soon. I don't know when. Goodbye. We'll see you soon. <laughs>